to present a case from my research that exemplifies simple regression and multiple regression. Let's start with simple regression. The study investigated whether practice, in this case group practice, improves chess skill. And group practice includes playing tournaments and games with other people and participating in group classes. So the um, causal model makes sense if you practice in some um, to, perform, to improve your, your ability. It makes sense to hypothesize that there will be an increase in that ability. Now for the linear model, we are going to use some measures of practice and measures of just skill. So group practice, the measure we use is we ask uh, people to uh, determine the number of hours they spend in group practice since they started to play chess and and we generated the accumulation of those hours and that's the variable and as chess skill we use the national rating which is an objective measure of their skill so um, basically this is the data um, in terms of the descriptive statistics, in national rating, the mean national rating is 1,988. In order to have an idea of what, what this means, is the, the ranking currently, uh, just chess rating currently, uh, the minimum ranking is 1,200, and the world champion now has 2,000 in, this, in the 2,800s. And, and you can see the standard deviation is around 200, which is, corresponds to a, a theoretical standard deviation of the whole population of chess players with ranking, with international ranking. Then we've got a group practice that was measuring number of accumulated hours until they participated in the study, and the mean is 7,921 hours with a huge standard deviation of 6,827. So we got people that practice very close to zero hours to people who practice 40,000 hours. So here you've got a practice in the x-axis and the scientific notation tells you that what after the plus, it tells you the number of zeros you have to add. So here is zero plus zero, zero, that's a zero. And one E plus zero four means that you have to add four zeros. So therefore this is 10,000, this is 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000. So and on the top, we've got the, a, a histogram that shows the distribution of hours. So a lot of people in between zero and 10,000, le much less between 10,000 and, and 10,000, sorry, between 10,000 and 20,000, and after beyond 20,000, just a handful of people. And this is the distribution of national rating. So national rating here goes from 1,400 to 2,600. Um, this is not the total range, we've got from 1,200 to 2,900. And this is the, but we don't have players of those levels here. Um, and this is the histogram showing yeah, the, the distribution of, or, of participants in each, in, in, according to their rating. Now, what uh, we need to do is to use the regression model that we explained in previous lectures, and it will be um, in uh, if we take y as a random variable, um, we are going to use here just skill or the national rating as this random variable, and we assume that um, that that random the random samples we collect come from a population which is normally distributed with a mean of gamma 
and standard deviation of sigma. And, and then we are going to estimate gamma using two other parameters, beta 0 and beta 1. And beta 0 is the intercept, beta 1 is the slope, and x is the other variable, group practice. So we are trying to uh, estimate group practice, uh, sorry, chess skill with group practice. Now we've got a null model, and the null model we fix this beta 1 to 0. And what it does is to generate a, a horizontal line. So that horizontal line should be the line that minimizes the distance between all the observations and the actual line. So, and that line would be would correspond to the mean of national rating. So the mean of national rating is 1,988, as shown here. So in the model, the beta 0 would be 1,988, and the beta 1 is 0, so there is no slope, and therefore the line doesn't have slope, it's horizontal. So that's a model that, that uh, we predict uh, data based on that model, and um, we need to see whether the model we, we propose is a better model than that one. So the model we propose is that beta 1 is not zero, that it has, there is some, there is a slope in that line. And so in order to, um, to that, that model to be the, the best possible, we have to come up with a line, again, that minimizes the distance between and the observations and the actual line. Um, and here, unlike in the null model, in which we can use only a horizontal line, we can use a line with a slope. And so the best line that minimizes the distance is this one. And that line is generated by this formula. So the intercept is 1859 and the slope is 0 0.0162. So what's the intercept? The intercept is the value of y that corresponds to an x of 0. So we've got 0 here, beta 0 is the value of y that corresponds to uh, x equals 0 in this model. So that value is 1,859. And the slope, what is the slope? Well, if what you, the, the slope is a change in national rating as a function of a change in one unit of group practice. So one unit of group practice here is one hour of accumulated practice. And so that means that if you practice one hour, your rating will change 0 0.0162 points, which is very, very little, is negligible. It, it doesn't even count in order to, to experience an increase in a, in a rank rating. The national and international federations would consider at least one point. So one hour doesn't increase much. 10 hours, you multiply this by 10, so is 0 0.162, not much. 100 hours increases 1.62 points, and 1,000 hours 16.2. Okay, so this 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 is what the slope is telling us, and it's calculating by taking two two points in um, in in x. So it could be this one and this one, but it could be this one and this one. It would work with any point, and we so let's take this one. So we have a distance here, and then we have a distance from there to there. So we do this divided by this, and then it gives you this value 0 0.0162. Okay, so um, this, this value 1859, does it have any meaning? Is it, is it the value that a player will have when they, they, they start playing chess without any practice? Not quite. That would, this is a very, very large value. And the reason, and that the, 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 
because this value doesn't have any um, interest meaning interesting meaning that uh, we in in some parameterization of the linear model we almost get rid of that value and I'm going to show you that later now is the time to add one variable to this model so we transform linear regression into multiple regression so we are going to consider individual practice as well so an individual pra practice causing just skill is this a sensible causal model? Yes, it is. If we practice chess individually, and in this case, individual practice is studying on your own. Well, we expect that there could be an increase in chess skill. So there is no uh, problem regarding the being a causal model. And now in the linear model, we have to add one um, component, which is beta 2 times z and z is the variable individual individual practice now here you need to be careful i'm presenting these two graphs these two graphs are when um, they show what what's the model if we consider total practice on its own so that's that's the, the same graph as i showed before and this one, if it is the, the regression that would occur if we use individual practice on its own, without group practice. So, but I'm not showing these, um, these uh, models here. I'm showing the full model, the model that takes into account both variables, group practice and individual practice. Now, um, <clears throat> we've got here this, the descriptives that are in terms of national rating and group practice they are the same now we added individual practice so in this sample the participants practice 5,404 hours on average and the standard deviation is also very large 5,815 accumulated hours so um, now, representing the, this model that with, with the two variables is more difficult. We have to do a three dimension, a third dimension. You can do it with a, with a you can create a third perspective, um, a perspective and create a, 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 an axis for variable Z. Um, and, and the line will, will become a plane rather than a line. Um, but because in multiple regression, we tend to add more and more variables. Then, after, after, when we add, uh, when we have four variables, it's not. Uh, oh, sorry, when we have three independent variables, it's already not possible to to visualize. So let's not go into trying to visualize everything. Um, but the idea is that we've got a. Uh, we need to solve for beta 0, beta 1, and beta 2 uh, for creating the model that that predicts as best as possible the current data. So in this case, uh, and, and we are con going to compare with a model that says that beta 1 and beta 2 is 0. So this model doesn't change. It will be the same. It's the same model as before in simple regression. It would be the mean. We put a line in the mean and this is our prediction for all the values of national rating. Uh, but this, this will change. So again, we've got a, a, an intercept in eight, 1,853. And then now in group practice, beta 1 is 0 0.0127. And the individual practice beta, or the beta 2, is 0 0.0062. So that means now it's saying that for one hour of group practice, you are going to increase 0.0127 points of national rating. And for one, hours, uh, one hour of individual practice, uh, it is expected to increase 0.0062 points of national rating. If we transform this into 10,000 hours, 10,000 hours will increase 12.7 uh, 
uh, points of uh, national rating of if uh, sorry 10,000 hours of group practice will increase 12.7 points of national rating and 10,000 hours of individual practice will increase 6.2 points in national rating. Okay, and um, so in both cases, in simple regression and multiple regression, we have to do some um, analysis that tells, that tells us whether the group, the more complex model, sorry, the more complex model is better than the null model. And and this could be done with maximum likelihood estimation, with, with what is called ordinary, ordinary, ordinary least square, and, and you can do model comparison approach or null hypothesis significance testing approach, but we are not going to go through that. Something that I have to say as well is that there are different ways of adding variables. So you can start with the null model, then add group, and if you and if that um, is a is a good variable at prediction, then you you try with individual practice, and if that that uh, that that variable adds value, stays in the model, and then we can um, and add try with the third variable, and so on and so forth. It could be the other way around. We start with all the variables and then we start to eliminate the ones that are worse to see whether there is an improvement in, in the total fit of the model. Remember that in order to avoid overfitting, we need to um, penalize for adding um, parameters. So we don't not only have to see how the model fits the data, but also we need to penalize for complexity. So, and this is a part of the evaluation of the models. In the Bayesian approach, we are going to use base factors to compare those uh, different models.